for the prep stages of our model all we're doing is priming black doing a xenophil of a light grey and coming in with a titanium white just to do a little dry brush over the high edges coming in with two to four really thin layers of faded green by Procryl we're just spraying the model mainly from top down but just be sure to cover the whole model Next up, doing a reverse xenophil, we're using Scale 75 Sunset Purple. Airbrushing from underneath to create shadows. You will get a little bit of overspray on this, but it doesn't matter, we're going to clean that up later. Coming in with a dry brush of faded green. This is literally just to cover up the areas that we just oversaturated with sunset purple and to bring more of that flesh colour actually back to the model. Dry brushing on this next step helps to get rid of the hard transition lines between the faded green and the sunset purple. The next step was actually one that I really wanted to try with this model and I've come in with a kind of a dark crimson almost blood red watercolour. Using the watercolour at first just to cover all of the areas that I want to have saturated and you can see as I'm going around the model once I have all the areas covered the main thing I'm actually doing with a slightly damp brush is fading the watercolours away from the saturation of paint. And then what I'm doing is coming back in with a clean brush, pulling the pigment back to the recesses. And the main reason to do this is to actually create a glaze-like effect. Every now and then I'm just cleaning the brush and wiping a pretty much clean brush with the slightest amount of the pigment in it over the areas just above where the main saturation of pigment actually is. This is a really nice technique. It's really fun. It's absolutely really easy and it's forgiving. If you don't like it, you can just get a big brush, you can wash it off if you make a mistake, again you can reapply it. The only time it's going to stay there is when you actually lock it in with a varnish. Feel free when using watercolours just to have fun and to really kind of experiment and see what colours you can get. Experiment with glazing with watercolours because again if you don't like it you can just come in with a clean brush and you can wash it off. It's a really freeing way of having fun whilst you paint. Next up I'm just using a bit of bold titanium white by Procryl. All we're hitting here is just the hair on the model, getting it ready for the next step. Now in the next step, we're going to use Citadel's Drakenhof Nightshade. We're just putting, it's about two, maybe three coats on all of the areas that have hair. Obviously, you can choose whatever color you want. You don't have to do it this way. You can use contrast, you can use shades, you can use normal paints and highlight up. It really is whatever tickles your fancy. Now we're just going over all the areas with bone, so claws, teeth, with scale 75's Oroko. For picking out the fleshy areas, 
around the mouth and the nose. We're coming in with Carabao Crimson and we're just wicking it into the areas and letting the capillary action take over. And once again, we're coming in with Bold Titanium White by Procryl. And as you can see, we're just hitting all the areas that have previously had Oroco on them. Be careful not to cover all of the Oroco up. We want to create a gradient here. My Bold Titanium White, I'm thinning down around a 50-50 ratio with Paint Retarder. I keep it on a wet palette. I prefer to use a Paint Retarder to actually thin my paint because it means I can come back in with a wet brush and I can feather it out. And generally, it just helps with transitions gives you a little bit more working time. And then once we're about done with that, I'll go into the eyes and we'll white out the eyes ready for the glow later. I decided for my Crypt Guard and for my army in general that I just wanted to add a little bit of extra colour in there. Something that wasn't necessarily in line with the original colour scheme. So I went with Mars Orange by Scale 75. It's a really nice colour and I know that when it comes to the next stage of putting Agrax Earthshade over all the bone, I can go over the Mars Orange cloth and it'll look great. Just be sure to go over anywhere that's had bone treatment and hit it with Agrax Earthshade, but don't let it pull too heavily, else it'll ruin the effect. There's a couple of areas here where it pulled a little bit, but I'm coming back in later on once the army's fixed to actually kind of finish off. I'm just getting the army to a tabletop standard really at the moment. I've just painted the spikes with Vallejo's Metal Colour Steel. It's a really nice paint, it goes on smooth. I really can't complain about Vallejo Metallics at all. Now for the spikes I was toying with the idea of doing wood but with the amount of brown that's going to be on the base anyway, even though later on I will be adding blood effects, gore and extra things, I just feel like doing the metal and with my Crypt Guard and all of my other weapons that I'm going to be doing with my undead, they're all going to be bone weapons. And next up, I'm just coming in with Scale 75's brown leather. It's a nice kind of medium brown. It's not too light, it's not too dark. When you're putting a bit of a wash on there, it really gives you a bit of variance in the colour and the tone. It's nice. Now you'll see on the underneath for some of the spikes, it's got dirt on there because I actually put some of the ground texture on them. And all I'm doing is coming in with that brown leather and putting it on there. And obviously in nature, everything gets dirty anyway. So textures would transition between different elements. I'm just trying to tie everything in to its actual environment. Now here's where the fun begins. This paint is really nice. It's Scale 75's Fleur FX. It's Techno Green. I'm using it on a wet palette, but I'm putting it neat onto the wet palette and I'm not watering it down. 
then I'm applying, I think it's three, maybe four thin coats into the eye. I'm just cleaning around the edges with a clean wet brush. It thins and feathers out really nicely. And you can see I'm just adding a little bit extra around the mouth and around the nose at the moment, which is gonna help towards the glow later on. Then once I actually have the green in the eyes at the saturation I want, I then add a little bit of water onto the green on the wet palette and then you can glaze it around the face very easily because they, these paints don't like to be watered down which means you can make glazes with them actually quite nicely. To finish this model off quickly we're just coming in with an application of Agrax Earthshade all over the brown leather of the base. As I've said before later on once the army's done I will be finishing the bases all at once. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and let's check out the end result. Thank you for your support.